Hello, and welcome to today's broadcast of Running on Love with God. My name is Lori Michelle, and I was awakened to the voice of our Creator in April of 2009. He said, go get pen and paper and start writing this down, and I listened. And now here I am, all these years later, broadcasting on social media, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever I can to share his wisdom at a time where the world is in crisis. Today's program is, I think, a fun topic because usually my topics are about terror and death and war, right? And Anna Marie, being an animal lover, requested a topic about animals. So this one's for you, Anna Marie. And it's uh, called, Does God Love Animals? And I did a short Q&A. And the answer in short is, no, he doesn't love animals. He loves humans, people. Everything in this world was created. He spoke everything into creation with the exception of us. We are spirit and we are part of him. We are like him. But animals were spoken into being. So they're inherently different. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't honor, respect, and enjoy animals. But humans, on the other hand, have adopted animals as pets, dogs and cats, etc. And they love their animals sometimes more than human beings. And with that, I'm going to turn the floor right over to you, Anna Marie, and we're going to talk about specific questions regarding animals. Good. I have lots of questions. Go the ahead. first question is based on the image that you posted with this show. And the image said, appreciate, protect. Yeah, exactly. That's the one. Appreciate, protect, even adore animals, but never worship them. God's creations serve mankind, not the other way around. My question, It's an adorable picture, too. Yeah. It's really sweet. My question is, can you give an example of crossing the line between adoring and worshiping an animal? Where do you go too far? Well, some people treat their pets better than their own family members. I've seen it. I've walked the streets of Morristown, New Jersey, and I was shocked to see a couple pushing a stroller with a doggy <laughs> in it. And the doggy was dressed in, it was adorable. It was funny. The dog had sunglasses on and clothing, and they were doting over this dog as though it was their baby. And perhaps, you know, some people can't have children or they didn't have children, or maybe they have children, but they like their dog better. You know, sometimes we like animals better because they don't talk back. All you really have to do is coochie coo, cuddle them, feed them, take them for a walk, and they, they don't argue with us. So they're a lot easier to get along with than many humans. So the problem isn't in loving the animal. The problem is that we should be better to humans, or at least as we should treat humans as well as we do our special animals. Well, there's laws. That's what this program's about, running on love with God. I hear him in plain English. And we've lost his rules and his laws, and he gave laws regarding animals way back when, especially when... When Adam and Eve were created, they were told not to eat the animals. And that created a problem because they viewed animals on the same level playing field as humans. And there was a lot of horrible, you talk about going too far, they were doing <laughs> th things that I don't want to speak about. Just use your imagination of what they did with animals. So um, he wiped the surface of the earth clean, Hashem God, and he allowed after the flood Noah to eat animals and gave Noah rules that you don't eat from a live animal. You're humane to the animals. The animals have a purpose. They serve humanity. We do not serve the animals. Everything here is for service to us, and we are here for service to Hashem God. 
Is that where kosher laws regarding butchering animal or slaughtering animals came into being was after the flood? Did yes, yes. Um, you see, and that's, um, thank you for bringing that up because a lot of people view the, the, they call it ritual slaughter, and that makes it sound like they're dancing around, you know, having a celebration while they kill animals, and it sounds like primitive behavior, and it's not at all. They're following rigid laws given to us by God himself on how to slaughter the animal in the most humane possible way. And so the kosher slaughter of the animals is an elevation of the animal. It's not a harm to the animal. And in Belgium right now, they passed a law outlawing the kosher slaughter of animal, which also infringes on the religious freedom of Muslims who have their own set of laws regarding the slaughter of animals. They, they make, they're making it illegal to do the kosher slaughter of animal and saying the only righteous way to slaughter the animal before, um, before making it meat for us to consume is through stunning. Do you know about stunning? Because I looked it up before we came online. Do you know much about it? No, it just it doesn't sound good, but go ahead, tell us. Okay. So they take a some sort of gun and they shoot it into the brain of the animal. And they stun it and render it, I suppose, unconscious, but and then they kill it. So it's a double it's really killing the animal twice. And how do you know that the animal's not suffering? Uh, I read about this, and it might be good for humans to be um, pacified visually that the animal's unconscious and now I can kill the animal. So it's satisfying your sensibilities. But you don't know that that animal is not suffering more. And he says, yes, it is. You're going against his law of slaughtering the animal for, for eating and using your own judgment as though you are more humane than God himself. You are more righteous and no better than God himself. It's really sinful what they're doing in Belgium. And I want to add that I also read that Hitler came into power in Nazi Germany and months later, just a few months later, outlawed the kosher slaughter of animals. And we know where that led. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Um, on the topic of meat, you said that Adam and Eve were not allowed to eat meat. And then after Noah, then people were allowed. Does that mean that vegetarians or vegans are held in higher esteem because we're following the original? Actually, no. Um, you have a choice, but it is a mitzvah a commandment, a good deed from God if we eat meat. And as Jews, we are to eat meat. He desires us to eat meat. When we eat meat, we are elevating the animal to a higher purpose. It's serving us. It's fueling us to serve God. So we're actually taking his creation and making his creation more holy in this world. It's actually doing a good deed for the animal. That's their purpose. They're here to serve us. The very act of being vegan or vegetarian could be construed as, I know better than Hashem God. I'm more compassionate than Hashem God, because I won't eat an animal. And those religious Jews or Muslims are eating animals, and I care more about the animals than they do. Do you understand? Yes. Um, is there anything about eating an animal that combines the animal's spirit with your spirit? 
You know, in reading some of the tribal religions, they believe that if they ate the heart of the lion, they would be infused with the courage of the lion. That kind of thing. Well, okay. He says, he's saying that the spirit of the animal does, our, our souls are holy and our souls don't mix with those animals. However, there's some truth to it, meaning what we eat, we take on many of the attributes of what we eat. So there are many commandments in Judaism of certain animals and products that we're not allowed to eat because we don't want to take on the personality and the attributes of that animal. For example, shellfish, bottom feeders, the whole concept of being a bottom feeder and eating the, the bottom of the ocean, the feces or whatever of other fish. We don't want to eat those scavenger fish because we don't want to become, have become like that. There are many rules that have spiritual connotations. A uh, pig, Jews are not allowed to eat pigs. So, but there's, there, it's very deep. I say this every week, I'm not a rabbi. I don't know all the halacha and I, you know what? I could study from now until kingdom come. <laughs> Is that an expression, right? Is, did I say that right? Yeah, you did. I would not know all of the written word and he does not desire me to study the written word. He desires me to share this information in a very easy flow of conversation. Then I'll make it a little lighter. Yes. Where do dogs and cats fit into God's master plan of creation? Well, from what I've discussed with Hashem God is they have manifested in this world as a choosing of mankind. We co-create with him. And he says, yes, we make choices. And he says, yes. So these domesticated animals that we breed are creation of mankind, co-creating, of course, with Hashem God, because nothing comes into being without his approval. Um, so animals, pets, doggies, they're creations of people. And they also follow his laws, meaning you have to treat all the animals, all the creations with a, a humanity following his laws and humanely, as I should say. Is it okay to kill animals when they encroach on your space? And I'm thinking of mice and cockroaches. Are there different? Oh, oh, oh I, you know, he, um, there's a lot of Jewish people who don't want to, don't even kill a bug. You know, they'll just set it free. Uh, I don't, I don't feel that way. And I've asked him, and there are some monster bugs in Israel. <laughs> and I kill them. I, I'm like, ah, I hate bugs. And he doesn't have a problem with me killing the bugs. And also, you mentioned rodents. They're in a separate category, believe it or not. And I don't know if there's Torah scripture that validates what I'm about to say, but I spoke about this because we spoke about medical research. And he said that rodents um, are in a different category of animal, which kind of makes sense if you view, if you view them in comparison to, let's say, a, a schnauzer, right? A rat versus a schnauzer. Well, right, but rodents, <laughs> they, they do serve a purpose. They're part of the food chain. Yes, yeah. Um, but is it okay for us to kill them? When, I mean, it's not okay for us to go out and just randomly kill animals, but if, they, if the mice are trying to move into your house, is it okay to kill them then? He just said, absolutely. Okay, good. <laughs> yes, thank, thank God. <laughs> thank you, God. Yes, he said, absolutely. And in terms of medical research, he said, that's the preferred species to do your testing on. Rodents. Rodents, mice. Um, so does that mean that it's not okay to do animal testing on dogs? 
it's not uh, that it's not okay, but it's a sticky situation because we must treat all animals humanely with the exception of, of these rodents who are, they're here for a purpose. They're part of the food chain and we do need to do some medical research. Their medical research benefits mankind and they're here to benefit us. But that's not to say that we do all kinds of maniacal experimentation on dogs just right. because um, they are God's creatures and we need to treat them in the right way. And some of the testing, uh, there's no law that says animal testing is against his laws. He said, correct. However, there are caveats, just in the same way we slaughter a cow so that we can consume its meat. We can't just willy nilly just decide, let's see what happens if we remove the eyes of the dog, you know, God forbid. I mean, um, you know, sort of like um, Mengele in Nazi Germany did that to Jews. You don't yeah. want to be cruel to animals. That would be horrific. Right. I have a whole list of things that we use animals for, and I'm, I'll go through the list. I'll give you one item at a time, and you can tell me your thoughts on that. Okay, first of all, I'm fur. not going to tell you my thoughts. I'm just going to give you verbatim. Okay, fur. Fur. He says, okay. Recreational hunting. No. <laughs> He just said, no, I wouldn't have known that. I was, uh, no. Culling? No, hun hunting for a purpose. Only. Right, well, hunting for food is different from recreational hunting. Yes. Right? Or, or he's saying if animals are creating a menace to humanity, like bear hunting. That okay. there were, the New Jersey was overrun with bear was causing, it's causing a lot of problems. Um, he said, that's okay. okay and then, that, was at, yeah, mm -hmm. that was going to be the next on my list, culling, because here in Illinois, we do a lot of culling of the deer when they get overpopulated in the forest preserves and there's an imbalance in nature. Um, and I didn't know if that was okay for people to be making those decisions about how to restore the balance. He's saying if it's for the preservation of mankind and humans, then it's okay. It has to have a purpose. There are strict guidelines and there are people who study these laws and it needs to be reviewed and approved by people who understand and know the halacha, the, the Torah law. Okay, next item, leather. He said, yes, we wear leather. Okay, zoos. He, he is answering with a question, why? You mean, why do we bother to have zoos? Yes. Why? What, what are they for? I think it's supposed to be for education and for entertainment. He's saying entertainment, no. Education, yes. And the treatment of these animals is critical. They must be treated. In a lot of these situations, they're not treated correctly at all. And we've seen, we've seen them go crazy and YouTube videos where gorillas actually break through glass, they're being taunted, not okay. Oh, he's, ooh, ooh, anger. Taunting animals, making fun of them, making right. them a, a spectacle. Okay. Is that a bell already? No, oh, it was a text message. Oh, okay. I thought that, wow, that was a quick program. But, okay. I forgot to turn my phone off. Okay, um, next item, genetic engineering. No. Okay. Industrial farming. No. I don't even know what it is. What's industrial Oh, industrial farming, farming is when you have, have like a thousand chickens in tiny little cages 
in order oh, to- Oh, I'm glad I said no, because I would have said no. That wasn't even my opinion. He said no. And he says no. Okay. Racing. He's, he's saying Hebrew, lo besetter. It is not okay. Not okay. Uh, racing, like horse racing, greyhound racing, horse racing. He's asking what you think of that. I think that what would be- he's, saying, he's asking what's the purpose of that? Well, the purpose is usually gambling. <laughs> he's asking me to ask you, what, is, what do you think Hashem God thinks of gambling? Well, I would think no. Um, and in terms of the racing, I think if you're providing a really good life for the animals, then maybe it's okay. But if you're just using them and then casting them aside when they're done with their careers, then that's a big no. It's, um, it's a loaded pistol, he just said. It's not a cut and dry answer. Um, Sport is good, gambling is bad. So it's one of those things where it would have to be closely examined. We would have to pull it apart with people who understand his laws, but gambling is wrong. Um, and using animals for our amusement is wrong. You know, we, we, if you peel it apart, we can figure out the nuances and find out what's right and wrong. But sport, sports is, is wonderful. Okay. Right. Uh, so the, then I'm guessing the answer to the next one is going to be yes. And that is competitions like obedience and agility. Agility? Agility. It's where dogs leap over barriers and show that they can follow commands. It says it's and... beautiful. Okay. It can be beautiful. Again, there can be a slippery slope with that as well. Okay. I don't service, know where, it, where the slippery slope is, but. Service animals like bomb sniffing and guide dogs and. Beautiful use of animals. Okay. Bomb sniffing to weed out terrorists. Dogs and, are very smart, very perceptive. Okay. And therapy animals would have to be. Excellent. Excellent use of animals. Okay. Um, transportation and hauling. Yes. Fine. Yes. Okay. Working animals like horses pulling plows. Yes. Okay. In medical research, we already said. Very difficult. There's no law against it. They're here for our service. But there are proper ways to go about it and each situation would need to be reviewed but he did say in preparing for this program that the preferred animal to use are rodents the lower animals which there's there's probably very deep spiritual reason for that because the lower animals or creatures of the world serve the higher purpose Okay, and then my last one was cosmetic research. He just said, absolutely no. Well, that's I got a very strong no on that. What do you think of that? Do you agree well, with that? Well, I think it depends on what it is. If you're just trying out different lotions and things, it doesn't seem so harmful. Do it on the rodents. Okay. All right. I, think, I think there's a lot of animal rights activists who would be very happy with that. Yeah, right? definitely. Right. Um, but they're wrong-headed too because you brought up furs. And people who are wearing furs, they, I've seen them, they throw blood at them and pain and they get very violent. It's, it's very wrong. It's very wrong to be violent against. Against people who choose to wear furs. They're... They're serving their purpose. They're giving us warmth. But there is a bit of crossing the line where how are they obtaining the furs? I've heard where they abuse the animals to get the furs. So right. if, if the fur was, was received by the human in an inappropriate way and the animal was 
killed in an inappropriate way. That's not okay. So I, I'm giving you blanket yes and no, yes and no, but every question that you've asked, we could probably spend an hour on each one of them or more. Okay. Um, so this is with dogs specifically. A lot of breeders will dock tails and crop ears of dogs to get a certain look that they want in a dog. Is that okay? What do you think of that, Anna Marie? Well, I, I want you to say no. I really, really do. He says it's not okay. Good. But he said that I got that. He didn't really answer, but I got that feeling like, and then he asked me to ask you. He was like, no. It, it's similar to humans. Oh, you know, I want to have a chin like Kirk Douglas, you know, and then, now I'm dating myself, right? <laughs> I want to have, uh, yeah, I don't know, someone's nose. I, I was online. There are people who try to look like other people. Right. There, there's someone online on YouTube, a woman who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to look like Barbie, the doll. <laughs> I know. It's so sad, that, but that, that's a different topic. Yeah, but I mean, we we're doing, it's similar. You're getting the dog to look like something that pleases you. And it's, he says it's cruel. Okay. Um, leashes and shock collars. No to shock collars and yes to leashes. Okay. All right. So uh, now are you okay with that answer? Yeah, you're mostly yeah. giving me the answers that I want to hear. Oh, good. And you're a vegan and you are an animal lover times a million. Okay, so now here is, this was one of your questions that you posed in your introduction. And this could be a big topic. And that is, where do animals go when they perish? Separate from humans. They're, they're an animal soul is not like a human soul. You may love them, you may cherish them. There's no Jewish or Torah law or any law in any religion that precludes you from loving your animals, but you do not go where they go. They are an energy that continues on and recycles and comes back to serve us but they don't elevate and ascend like a human. We're here to grow and ascend and be closer to our creator. Animals don't do that. Your dog doesn't become a better dog and get it right the next time. <laughs> He's just your dog, you love him, and he goes and he served his purpose. Okay, you can continue on the topic if you want. So when we if, go to the next world, we're not reunited with our dogs and cats and animals that we loved in this world. No, I'm, I'm sorry to say no, but I'm really not sorry. You have to understand where we fit into Hashem God's plan for creation. His ultimate goal, we are his family. You are a child of God. The animals are creations of God, different. You can love and appreciate your animals, but they are not on the same level as you and me. And they never will be. And eating the animal is elevating you to a higher purpose and taking that animal and elevating its, its uh, body and its essence into its higher purpose and serving humanity. That's why they're here. So. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope I didn't say anything that ruffled too many feathers. There are a lot of animals that, animal lovers that love their animals more than they like people. And that's not why we're here. We're here to get along with each other and ascend as human beings, as creations of Hashem God. We are creations of His, like Him, and animals are here to serve us 
and humanity. I hope you enjoyed this program, and I hope you'll go to my website, lauriemichelle.net. There are lots of programs. There'll be more and more programs for you to listen, learn, and work for peace, because if we understand what he intended for us and follow his laws, we will have peace in our time. God bless you. May there be world peace in our time. God bless you.